Hi, we're back. It's still chapter 3.4, energy. This time we're going to do all the sample problems. We're going to use t-charts to do all of these conversions. It's important that you understand how to do t-charts because we use them a lot in chemistry. So let's go ahead and take a look at some example problems. Task 3.5 says it takes 1,240 joules of energy to change an unknown solid into a liquid. Convert the energy from joules to calories. We learned in the last video that this right here is the conversion factor between calories and joules. That says factor, you can't read that. Let's try to write legibly, F-A-C-T-O-R, there you go. So uh, we're going to do a conversion. Conversions require uh, t-charts. So we have 1,240 joules. That's what we have. We're trying to find calories. So I'll make a t-chart. Right? Whatever unit I have on top, I'm trying to convert joules to calories. So I'm going to get rid of joules by dividing by it. Joules divided by joules is equal to 1. So I get rid of the unit joules. I can cross these out. Now, I don't have a unit. I've got 1,240, no unit. To replace the unit joules, I need to use calories. So I'm gonna put calories on top. Now there has to be some relationship between these two, and there is. As it turns out, for every one calorie, there are 4.184 joules. Again, you don't have to have that memorized. We're going to give that to you on what we call our pink sheet. So what do we have here? If I was going to show this algebraically, it would be 1,240 times 1 over 4.184. Or we can say 1,240 times 1 divided by 4.184 is my answer. So let's pull up my handy dandy calculator. I don't think I have it handy dandy actually. Where is my calculator? I do not have a handy dandy. There it is. All right. Let's pull it up. So what are we going to do? We're going to take 1,000. 240, we're going to multiply by 1, I don't really have to show that work, and then we're going to divide by 4.184. And so I get a value of, and again we're going to talk about significant figures at some point, not yet, but I get a value of 296, I'm going to go to one decimal, 296.4 Oh, I want to do that up here. I'm sorry. Joules canceled out. The only unit left is calories, so that has to be calories. So there's my answer. Let's do another one. Now, this time, it says it takes about 1,008 calories to burn a dollar. True statement. How many joules does it take to burn a dollar? So we've got 1,008 calories. I'm going to set up a t-chart because I need to do a unit conversion. I want to change from calories to joules. So calories is on top. I want to get rid of calories. I don't want to end with calories. So I'm going to put calories on bottom. Why? Because now they cancel out. They're opposite from each other. What am I going to have to replace that unit? I'm going to have a joule. All right. Now we saw up here, right here, it's 4.184 joules for every one calorie. So 4.184 joules is one calorie. Now, in this case, let me show you what this means. This is 1,008 times 4.184 divided by one, okay? So when I plug that into my calculator, I've got 1,008, oops, don't want that. 1,008 times 4.184. Missed the one there. Okay. 
So I get a value of, and I'm going to leave this as one decimal, so 4217.5. So that's my answer. Let's talk about units. Calories cancel out, I'm left with joules. So I put a capital J on there, and there's my answer. Let's do some more. Okay, I'm not going to show you the calculator anymore. And I'm going to quit out of that, actually. Let me close that, because it really bogs down the system here. So we're going to close that. All right. This says, when one gram of diesel fuel burns, 48 kilojoules are released. So that now is a kilojoule. All right. And as it turns out, for every one kilo, there's a thousand. So there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule. So 48 kilojoules are released. How many joules are released? Again, we're going to use a T chart. So we've got 48 kilojoules. I want to convert kilojoules to just joules. So kilojoules is on top. I'm going to put kilojoules on bottom. What do I want to take the place of kilojoules? I want joules. And as it turns out, and again, this is also on the, on the pink sheet, 1,000 joules is one kilojoule. So this is 48 times 1,000, which happens to be 48,000. So there's 48,000 joules in 48 kilojoules. Try the next one. Now, building off of that, so we're still talking about task 3.7, how many calories are released? So we're going to convert from joules to calories. So I've got 48,000 joules and I want to convert that to calories. I'm going to use the t-chart because I'm doing a conversion. So joules on top, joules on bottom. That cancels out. And I want to replace that with calories. So I've been using that for every one calorie, there are 4.184 joules. Now, I'm going to pull out my regular calculator. And I'm just going to do this. This is going to be 48,000 divided by 4.184. So I get a value of, and I'm going to go to no decimals in this case, 11,472 calories. So there I converted from kilojoules to joules, and then from joules to calories. Let's try another one. A pint of Ben and Jerry's The Tonight Dough has 1,210 kilocalories. Again, true statement. I looked it up. That's my favorite ice cream. So I've got 1,210 kilocalories. Now, they're asking us how many calories would that be? So I'm going to do a conversion and I'm going to go from kilocalories. So I'm going to cross those out and I'm going to pick up calories. As it turns out, there are 1,000 calories in one kilocalorie. So again, I've got uh, 1,210 times 1,000, which is a really big number. So that ends up being 1,210,000 calories. That's a lot of calories. Yikes. That's in the whole pint, though. Well, the next question is, how many joules are in the pint? So now we're going to convert from calories to joules. So I've got 1,210,000 calories, and I want to do a conversion, so i got to use the t-chart. So I'm going to convert that, get rid of the calories, pick up the joules, and I know that there are 4.184 joules in one calorie. So I'm going to take that value that I have, and I'm going to multiply by 4.184. And I get a value of 5 million... That's a lot. 62,640 joules. That's a lot of joules. That's a lot of significant figures, too. So if you're at the point where you're counting significant figures, that's going to look really weird to you. We're not there yet. We'll get there, but we're not there yet. 
Let's put this in scientific notation though. So scientific notation is, a, is an easy way to show really big numbers. So for instance, this number becomes 5.06. And so here's the decimal. I moved it one, two, three, four, five, six times. So I make it 5.06 times 10 to the sixth joules. Again, a lot of joules.